I'm going to go ahead and upload some images as an example here. Um, hopefully we can have this pop up and it will actually open up the directory I was working in. That's perfect. There it is. You can see my computer is being super speedy for some reason. I'm going to go ahead and select then these particular ones. Click on open at this point. And then what we should see is that this will actually go through and then upload these images then into um, this particular model. Now we're not gonna go through the training portion, like the intensive training. I did wanna show how you go through the training for this particular AI model, um, because I think it just, it kind of makes sense to, to kind of close the loop with that. Really, after we do the training, you click a button to actually have it train and it'll go away for 15, 20, 30, however large your data set is and train that particular model. But really what you have to do then afterwards is you have to go through every image and identify what that object is. So an example would be, I'm clicking on my object now. I'm going to say, yep, this is my green T rose and I'm going to assign it. And you can see it starts to get a little bit smarter here. You can kind of see that there's this little box around it that identifies the label. Now this area matters. I mean, a lot of people think, oh, I'll just use that recommended default. You can, but if you're trying to make it exact in terms of actually having the image recognizer identify that specific object, the lid, the bottom, the net weight information that's inside of here, you need to make sure that you're as close as possible to that object to identify it. So green tea mint as an example, and then you can see that the third one is getting a little bit better here, right? There's not, I really don't want or don't need to make an adjustment with it. Whereas if I did that, if I clicked on, for example, the higher level one, that's really not the object because I'm including white space inside of here as I go through and do that. So just something to note, um, basically you go through this process with every single image, right? So you can see where this gets really fun. But quite honestly, instead of having to program our script where you would actually have to do this no matter what, this is easier than heck to tackle. And once yep. you're done tagging all that, you actually go through and train that particular model. So I'm gonna go back into Power Apps here and we're gonna open this up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and re-sign in on this side of it. And hopefully we pull up exactly the content inside of here that we need. And I'm gonna go into my environment that we are interacting with. So this is gonna be our pre-sales demo environment that we have. And I'm gonna go into my AI builder and I'm gonna go into my models now. And we're gonna take a quick look at the models that I've created. And you can see, I already have a model here where I went through all of that and trained and published. And you can see I did it an hour ago. So I'm gonna take a look at this object detection model that's here and let's go ahead and test this, right? So it thinks that the probability that it's going to answer everything correct on this model is 100%. Now Amazing. that really isn't, yeah, exactly, right, Marcus? <laughs> like, wow, right? So what that really means is that we need really more data to bring that model to a more realistic percentage. And typically with machine learning, like you get to 99% and above, you're at a pretty good statistical model. A lot of companies will be fine with 95% accuracy with it. Now, the cool thing about this is that I can do a couple of things from this model directly. One is I could actually do a quick test and I could upload, for example, one of the test images that we have inside of here as well. So right now in my lab builder information, um, we can see I got my object detection green tea. I'm gonna go to the root of this, and then I've got a test folder here that I can actually take images that have not been trained. So I did not use these images when I went through the training portion of it by uploading those 30. And what I can do is I can highlight that particular one, open it up, and actually have it upload and have it go through its image recognition capability. So basically what it's doing is it's taking a look at this information and trying to figure out what are the objects in here and what are they related to. So um, cool thing here, it actually was successful it looks like. So it has an 88% confidence level that this is green tea cinnamon a 92% confidence label that this is rose and a 89% confidence level that this is green tea mint. Now, now that we validated this, we can use this model in a lot of different options now. Um, and this is where this power comes into play pretty substantially. 
So an example would be, let's say that you, um, you know, crops are one that I've seen this used with as well. Um, you take a bunch of images of crops and you make a way to be able to take that image and upload it. And there's a couple of different ways that we could do that. One would be, for example, that in the model, if I click on the use model, for example, I can create either a new app or a new flow related to this. And this is a really important distinction because if you think about it, an app may be unrealistic for your organization to be able to take and handle and process. Meaning if you have somebody that's external on a website that may be uploading this information to you on what you wanna do image recognition on, you don't want them to install an app and a power app is typically something that is for the internal organization. Now a flow on the other hand can be accessed from many different points. An example of that, if you have a custom portal for your uh, customer or a portal, excuse me, that we're gonna take a look at in a second here, you could use a flow to take that image and then apply logic to it to figure out then fault symptom reason and field service, or you could make it so that it'll actually send an email if it detects something in the image that looks like, um, for example, with a crop, if it needs nitrogen for leverage, I know we've taken a look at that as well. The point is, is that you can basically use this model really as you see fit. And if we stick with an app, just as an example, really quickly here, I can click on this, create a new app. It's gonna bring Power Apps into here. And obviously we're not covering Power Apps today, um, even though we've done it many times, and I think it is a very, very cool technology. The point here is that we can actually take that model and then expose it into an app that we can then interact with really as part of our uh, processing. Um, so you can see it basically took it, it has that information in here as well, it's actually adding the control, and now we have that object detection uh, object inside of here. And really, if I wanna try to detect, I can click on the detect portion here again, and it brings up once again, our wonderful little area. And so let's take a black, black and white picture or a dark background picture. Uh, and upload that and see how well it does. Well, you can see here that it's using this Power App, which could be on your phone now, that when you clicked on that, it was the camera and green tea cinnamon, green tea rose, um, so on and so forth are inside of here. So you can see that it went through and did that image recognition capability. And we can zoom just a little bit if we want to. I don't have a, a touch monitor, but you know, I think you guys get the point with it is that we can expose this in multiple areas. So that's it's not the just, only model. Yeah. Yep. Just so we didn't just so we didn't miss that. I mean, the, the integration with your camera is absolutely there uh, within the Power App. So you pop this up on your phone, you pop it up on your tablet, and you can leverage your your camera on the device that you're using. That is correct. Yep. 